So lately, there has been a couple of libraries that can use the power of large language models to scrape the web without us having to basically do anything. They will read the URL and give us either a markdown or sometimes even a structured data that we can add in our Excel sheet or store in our database. And since we have really strong and really cheap large language models today, it makes sense to use these libraries instead of going with the free alternative of beautiful soup or other ways where we have to inspect the web page, understand the structure and locate the specific elements that we want to scrape. So the advantages of these new packages are so many. And the biggest of all of these advantages is, as we said, saving the effort, but also creating a script that can act as a universal web scraper for that specific use case that you have. Say, for example, you want to scrape data out of a news website. You can use the same code to scrape from multiple news websites. And sometimes you can even use that same code to scrape from other websites that has nothing to do with news where you are looking for totally different information. And today we are going to see how we can create such code and how it can help you scrape the web with minimal changes. So let's go ahead and jump to my screen. All right, so before opening uh, VS Code and starting to work, let's just discover Firecrawl, which is the library that we are going to be using. By the way, it's it's open sourced and it has 4,000 stars. So here, if we come back to Firecrawl and create an account, you can just basically go to accounts in here and get an API key. That is the API key that we will use later on in our project. So if we go to Playground and let's say, for example, we want to scrape, let's say, for example, OpenAI pricing. open AI pricing here and click on run. We will see that we will receive markdowns of the entire page. And the thing is, we don't have any type of divs or lists or any type of tags that we have inside the HTML. So this is very important because before, if you want to do extraction using HTML, you will basically have to pass the whole structure into a large language model. And that means that that is a lot of tokens. Sometimes it goes well over 100,000 tokens. So the fact that we have markdowns will help tremendously in order to get a cleaned enough data that we can pass to a large language model. And then of course, from there, it will make sense financially to use any new cheap model in order to do the extraction and make it a structured data. So now let's see the universal web scraping agents workflow. We have to see that before opening uh, VS Code so you know exactly what I am doing whenever I am writing whatever code. So our input is going to be the URL. That is always going to be the case. This URL will be passed to Firecrawl in order to get the markdowns. Once we get the markdowns from Firecrawl, we're going to give that to a large language model. It could be an open AI model like GPT 3.5 or GPT 4.0 or Gemini Flash from Google or any other model. Then, of course, we are going to ask it to extract something from the markdown according to our fields. We have to basically tell it exactly which fields we want to extract from this markdown. After that, we're going to get semi-structured data. So even though that we are going to get a JSON answer from the data extraction, we cannot control 100% of the names inside of that JSON. This is why I call this semi-structured, even though that it is structured enough. And once we are going to get that data, we're going to go to another stage where we are going to format and save the data. So we're going to format it according to JSON on and then we are going to have it in a data frame a pandas data frame and we're going to save both of them here you can basically have a database or any sort of storage medium that you prefer and here i chose json and excel so let's go ahead and open this code here we are going to create always a new folder so let's call it listing file crawl and then inside of here we are going to create a new file let's call it app.py and of course we are going to create a virtual environment so python-m vnv vnv and then let's go ahead and get inside of the virtual environment so let's do vnv scripts activate for this Let's clear this out. And then the latest step that we are going to do in the initiation of every project is creating a new file. Sorry. A new file. Let's call it .env. This is where we are going to place our API keys. So here, if I go to accounts, I will be able to cap copy this API key. And then I will, of course, use OpenAI. So for that, we are going to use OpenAI. And at this point, everyone knows how to get 
an OpenAI API key. Let's copy it and then we are going to place it inside of here. Okay, so now we are going to install all of the requirements that we need. So I already have a file and this file I am going to put it right here. These are all the packages that we are going to need in our project. So now we are going to pip install dash r requirements by the way it's file crawl dash by not just file crawl if you want to install it independently without the other ones okay now that it has finished installing everything we are going to start coding let's clear this out and let's import so from file crawl we are going to import file crawl app from openai then we are going to import OS, import JSON, and then import pandas as PD. And then lastly, we are going to import date time. Okay, so the first function that we are going to start with is going to be scrape data. And this scrape data will only take the URL. First thing that we are going to start with is to load the .env so we can load the API keys that we have here. And then we are going to use that API key to initialize the Firecrawl app that we have here. And then we're going to use that app to scrape the URL that we have here. We are going to delete this for now. We're not going to need it. And then we are going to check for markdown in case we have an empty response or we have any kind of problem. Then we are going to return the markdown. If not the case, we are going to return an error. The second function that we will have is basically saving that raw data because I am not a fan of doing an extraction and then not saving the data somewhere. So we are going to save it inside a folder called output that we have here. So it is pretty straightforward. By the way, we just create it. So let's call it output. Let's create it in here. And then we will have a text file, a .md, which is basically a text file inside of our output folder that we have here. And it's going to be saved according to the date time of when we are running the process. So now we are going to go to the most important part and please, it is not very complicated. I'm going to paste it in here. It's just that the system prompt is basically very long, but other than that, it is not that complicated. So this is the format data function. And this is the function responsible of taking the raw data that we will have and then extracting the structured data from that markdown that we had before. So here we are going to initiate our OpenAI client inside of clients. And then if we don't provide this optional parameter, we will basically end up with this field. By the way, the use case that we are going to use is going to be Zillow. So in our use case, this is going to be the website that we are going to extract. As you can see here, we have a map in here. We have the listings around here. So basically what we want to do is that we want to extract data out of this website here and structure it. So here, as you can see, the fields that we have here are basically the fields that we can find normally in a real estate listing. So the address, the real estate agency, the price, the beds, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the information that we are going to be extracting from the website. Then we will have the system message and the user message that we are going to store inside of, of a variable in here. So here you are an intelligent text extraction and conversions assistant. Your role is basically to take a raw data and then extract a JSON format from it. This is very important. Important. We have to mention that it is a JSON format. And then later on, we are going to see that the response format being a JSON object. This is incredibly important. If we don't do this, we're not guaranteed to have a JSON response every time. And then we are going to get the response out of the chat completion from OpenAI. We're not going to use GPT-40 or GPT-4 Turbo. We're only going to use GPT-3.5 Turbo 11.0. This should be 1106. And then we are going to pass the system message and the user message. By the way, inside of the user message, we have is extract the following information from the provided text. Then we are going to have the data. This is the data that we have already saved that we will get from scrape data. And then of course we will use the fields that we have provided in here. Good. Now we're going to go, if we had a response and our response is not empty, we are going to parse that JSON and we're going to use json.loads in order to get that string into a JSON format that we will later save in the next function. So here we will have our last function, which is basically save the formatted text that we will save in a JSON format and then in an Excel format in order for us to be able to visualize it easily. So inside of the output folder, always we are going to get that JSON format that we have just got from here. So the return value that we have here is going to pass into here and then we are going to create a JSON format from here and then we have a little function that we will see why it will be useful later on and then of course we are going to get that formatted data in a data frame that we will later on 
save as an Excel sheet. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add our last bit of code in order to run the process. And here we have the last part of our code where we are going to initiate a timestamp in order to use it later on inside of our functions. We are going to call our functions using the URL that we have here. So this is the first website that we are going to extract. And then we are going to save that raw data that we just got here using our function. And then we are going to pass that raw data again to format the data. And then we are going to save it in the format of a JSON and an Excel sheet. So let's go ahead and run our code and see what's going to happen. Okay, so here we have a problem and it's because of date time. So we should use from date time, import date time, because there is a problem of naming detection. It actually uses the module instead of using the function inside of date time, but that's not important. So let's run it again and see what's gonna happen. All right, so we can already see that it have saved up the raw data that we have in here. So we are going to open it. And as you can see, this is basically the markdown of the whole page. This markdown will then be handed to OpenAI in order for it to give us a JSON and an Excel sheet. So this is the JSON that it has came up with. And then from this JSON, it has been able to format it and then to save it as an Excel. And here we have the sorted data and then we have it as an Excel sheet. We are going to see both of them. So as you can see here in the output, we can see that instead of having just basically the information that we want, usually it will give us one key and inside of this one key, we will have all of the information. This is why in my code, I have told you in format, I have to basically check if our dictionary have only one key. And if it's that the case, I am going to go inside of the dictionary to get all the keys for my formatted data. So here, if I go to my project and then go to output, I will find my Excel sheet that I can then open. And inside of here, I can find all of the information that I want. So basically now from this website, I have been able to generate a structured JSON and then a structured Excel that if I open, I find all of the information that I want structured and even URLs to take me to the exact listing that I have scraped the data from. So here, if we click on this listing here, it will take me exactly to the listing and I will be able to compare between my scraping and the listing that I have here and all of this without using any tags or any type of page inspection that I would usually do if I am using beautiful soup or traditional ways of scraping the data. And even more than this, we can use the same code that we have here to scrape other websites that have nothing to do with the structure of this website that we have just scraped. This is the closest code to a universal web scraper that I have ever created. And it is amazing how easy it is to create these processes using large language models today. So if I go back to the website, in order to compare the data, we can see that here we have $630,000. It is exactly the price. We have 1600 square feet. So exactly what we want. And then we have the home type and the listing age. So I would say that on the listing age part, this has not been very successful. It should have kept it empty but for all of the other ones we can see that it has been able to actually get the data and if we do a simple date subtraction we can get the exact date when this house has been listed so that is a problem that can be easily resolved okay so this was the first url now let's go ahead and go to a totally different website that has nothing to do with this URL. So this is going to be a different website. So let's open it here. So let's see if it's going to be able to get data from here. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so we got the raw data now. And it has been able to get the sorted data and then get us the Excel sheet. So first of all, let's go to the sorted data and see what it has been able to uh, extract. So that is the sorted data that it has been able to extract. And then if we go back to our folder, we can find this Excel file that if we open it, we are going to find this information. So literally this code has been able to scrape two different URLs that has nothing to do with each other simply because we have used large language models. So if we go back to our Excel sheet and do the same thing, we are going to find that, for example, the first one is this address with this real estate agency with this price and two beds and then one bath and 1000 square feet. Okay, so that is already very good. Now let's see if we are going to be able to do this with a website that is basically in a foreign language. For example, let's see if this is going to be able to work on a website that is in French. So this is a French website. These are homes in a city called Lyon in France. Let's see if it's going to be able to get those listings and understand how to get them, even though that our prompts are in English. So let's run our code. And here we have an error, and this is very important. 
the error is that the model's maximum context length is 16,000 tokens. So here we can see that the model that I have used does not have enough of a context length size in order to be able to treat the raw data that we have just gotten in here. So here we have the raw data that is basically so long, so it hasn't been able to actually get all of this information and basically process it. So if I go back here to response, here I am using GPT 3.5 Turbo 1106. We can just change that to 4.0 and we can run the code again and let's see if it's going to be able to treat it this time. Okay, so we got the raw data, it's here. And this time it's going to take more time in order to process it because it is so many tokens. And finally, we got an answer. Finally, I have waited so long for this one. Okay, so we got the raw data. It is very long, as we said. And then we got an answer. So let's go ahead and visualize the answer. Let's group them by type. Yep, this is the last one. So let's open it. And as you can see here, even in French, it has been able to scrape all the data. So here I can see the price. Of course, the price is going to be in euros, the address, the real estate agency, the number of beds. And of course, if I click here and I open it, it's going to open exactly the listing. So here we have to do this. So as you can see here, if we compare between the two, we can see that we have here the address, the right one. We have the agency. I don't know where it found it. But yes, here. So this is the agency. The price is correct. And then we have here three beds. I don't know what beds mean in English. In French, rooms that can be closed are called chambres. So maybe it is the equivalency, but it's like everything, like uh, rooms that can be closed or living rooms or anything else. So here we have cat pied. So I don't know if it should have four in here. You guys tell me what beds mean. What do you mean by beds in English? You can have three beds in the one room. I don't understand the logic of it, but you guys tell me in the comments if this is uh, correct or no. We don't have any indication about baths. It's not really something that the French talk about that much, but here we have the first clearly wrong field. Here we have square feet and here we have a square meter. So this is the imperial system. This is the metric one, the correct one. And it could not understand that this is basically square meters. It should have at least indicated that here we have a square meter. And of course, here we have the, the rest of the information. So basically that is it. So it has been able, same code to extract a, a totally different URL. So that is already very good. This code has been impossible a year or two years ago. It is impossible to create kind of a universal web scraper that will work in any instance without having to deal with any inspection or web page specifications. Anyways, that has been me guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. It has been a long video. I know, but thank you guys for staying all the way through. I really appreciate it and catch you guys next time. Peace.